hello, and uh, our topic today, I'd like to talk a little bit about graduate school in music. Uh, I get lots of questions from musicians who are interested in graduate school, uh, and of course my own students who I guide toward that path sometimes. And the, the landscape is really changing, and so I have a few thoughts about things that I tell musicians who are considering grad school. First of all, it's probably not realistic for most people to expect graduate school to lead you to a full-time music faculty position at a college or university. Uh, and what makes this especially tough is that the current generation of teachers who are in their 60s and 70s um, they actually had a relatively easy time because they came out of school during a period of exponential growth in American higher education. My own professor told me that when she finished her master's degree in New York, she and all of her classmates knew they were going to get multiple offers from all over the country just because so many new schools were opening. It was the baby boom. It was a time of uh, expansion. And so you didn't need to go get a doctorate. Um, you didn't need to take any job they threw at you. You could kind of write your own ticket. So there is a generation on faculty still out there advising students who have not had to face the realities of the job market. And, and sometimes they can be a little bit uninformed about that. My own undergrad professor I, I was talking about this, you know, I want to go to grad school, I want to be a professor. And my own undergrad teacher said, oh, you'll find a little college somewhere. And that represented her generation where, oh, there are plenty of colleges, there are plenty of jobs. That, that is no longer the case. Um, there are not new music programs opening. And within the programs that are out there, if anything, they're at a status quo or they're shrinking. So... Um, this, this is a difficult situation. Combined with that, uh, I tried to count how many doctoral music programs there are in the United States. And it's not so easy. There's not a list anywhere. But I think there are between 70 and 80. 70 and 80 schools in America, all of which are turning out doctoral students in various areas. Uh, so how many does each program graduate a year? One or two? Well, if they even graduate one pianist per year, that's 80 new pianists every year coming out into the job market, many of whom probably want a faculty position. How many new faculty positions are there? Well, I've tried to count this too, and it depends on whether you count part-time or whether you count the ones where you have to accompany the students and take out the trash on Thursdays and wax the floors or, or whether you only count tenure track jobs but really between generously 20 and 30 a year in the United States so even if every DMA program graduates one they have less than a 50 percent chance of finding any opening and I think they're graduating on average more than one some of the larger ones could be graduating you know five or ten a year. So let's say there are easily, easily two or three hundred new DMA pianists in America every year. Every year. So that's probably a ratio of, of about 10 to 1. And I've tracked who is getting the jobs and as far as I can tell it looks to me like there are some doctoral programs in America who have never placed uh, graduating DMA in a full-time faculty position in the last five to seven years. Not even one. Um, I don't think I'm exaggerating. I'm not going to name any names, but um, the jobs tend to go to a group of students from a select few schools, uh, big-name schools. Uh, I met a doctoral student recently, uh, a very fine, intelligent person, who said that at one particular school, the DMA students have to sign a document that says, I understand that this doctorate will not lead to a faculty position. So 
bravo to that school for being honest. So sure, go get your DMA, go to grad school, but think like a business person. And here's what I mean. A business person thinks about where, our, um, where the dead areas are and where the growth areas are. Because if you, if you want to make a living, you have to do something that's of value to the community. People don't pay you to do something that they don't need to have done. So right now I'm looking out the window and there's, it snowed here. Uh, it's a nice little snowy day before Christmas. And there's a guy, he's driving a little tractor with a, with a sweeper on it. And it, it sweeps the snow off the sidewalk. Well, we need our sidewalks cleared. We have 3,000 people walking around. So that guy's getting paid. He's getting real money to drive around in this little machine. On the other hand, uh, if, if I want to just um, play checkers this morning and drink coffee, I certainly can do that, but nobody needs me to do that, so they're not going to pay me. So yeah, get your DMA, but think like a business person. What do they need done that you could do? So here's what nobody needs. They don't need you to be a super virtuoso in a tuxedo or a fabulous gown who comes out and plays traditional concertos and recitals at a very high level. They just don't need you. There's plenty of people and they're willing to do it for a cheeseburger and a, a, and a couch to sleep on for the night. Um, unless you just literally don't care about eating and you're willing to have a paper route to make money or like sell LuLaRoe online or whatever, I, w I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't advise anyone to do that. Um, also, being the great piano professor at a prestigious school with a beautiful facility and incredible, talented students lining up at your door to listen to your wisdom. Again, that's probably not available. Um, there are plenty of people doing that who are great at it, and, and they're not quitting their jobs so that you can <laughs> take their job. Here are some growth areas where there are some really good opportunities. Um, there's a thing called RMM. It's called Recreational Music Making. And um, the Music Teachers National Association, MTNA in America, is giving a lot of attention to developing this area where it's uh, older students, adult beginners, people who are just have normal boring jobs like selling insurance, and they want music in their lives. And they need teachers who specialize in adult beginners who are making music recreationally. That's a growth area. And if this YouTube channel has shown me anything, it's that there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people who love music. They're not going to do it professionally, but it's a very important part of their lives. You know, a lot of you guys, it's um, you do your job and clock out at five and get home and eat something quickly. And the, the first thing you want to do is get to that piano and get back to that music. I think that's beautiful. I think that's great. And uh, if some who are going to grad school can find a way to be a resource for that, bravo. Another one, first generation students at colleges. Uh, I just got through saying that college jobs are hard to get. That's true. Um, but for those who want to target college jobs, a lot of colleges are concerned about first generation students. Students whose parents did not go to college who have no family tradition of how to be a good college student. Uh, so they need people who are good at reaching those students and teaching them. Likewise, musicianship curricula and theory pedagogy. Uh, we have not done a great job of teaching theory in the 20th century, and uh, schools are getting a bad conscience about it and trying to figure out a better way to do it. So pianists who are great at that have an edge over pianists who are not. Uh, oral skills acquisition is another one. Community engagement, grant writing, and cross-disciplinary work. Community engagement is where you figure out how to take your nifty little program and get it outside its walls and into the schools and the community centers, um, the senior citizens gatherings, places like that, where the community is actually meeting and bring music to them. Um, grant writing, of course, is how to bring in external funding from the National Endowment for the Arts, National Endowment for the Humanities, and private endowments. Grant writing is a huge job, uh, very difficult and time-consuming, 
Very few classical musicians are good at it. So anyway, there, there are more areas we could go into, and you know, if you want to throw some questions in the comments, I, I guess we can talk about it. Uh, but I would say anyone thinking about going to grad school, either master's or doctorate, think like a business person. Yes, pursue the music you're interested in, and there is value to being locked away in the ivory tower and just studying something beautiful simply because it's beautiful. You should do that for a while. But when you come out, you're going to need to think like a business person. Where do people need you? Where do people not need you? And I would consider that very carefully before diving into the four or five, six, seven, eight years of grad school so that you have a plan. All right. Good luck. Think about it. We'll talk again soon. Ciao.